like iconic behavior. That's a sasang and I was like, this is, li it's literally so tiny. It's so tiny. Like I was on Habbo Hotel when the great Habbo mute happened. So in conclusion, do I think Rina has good reading taste? Well, Hey besties, it's Joel, and today I'm going to be reading books recommended by one of my favourite people on this earth, and that is Rina Sawayama. If you do not know who Rina Sawayama is, she is a Japanese-British artist, and I love her. I love her music so much. She just inspires me, and just inspires me to do more, and create more, and just the way that she takes down the patriarchy, the way that she discusses the chosen family aspect, and misogyny, racism, it's, it's unfathomable. The way that she does it is just so perfect. Perfect. I love her. The way that she recently had to fight for a nomination in the British Music Award show, legendary, iconic behavior, and I love her. It's amazing, and I'm truly, truly proud of being a pixel and just celebrating everything that she does. And in celebration of one year of Sawayama, I'm going to be reading books recommended by Rina, and this is just basically one of the videos I've been really looking forward to make, because I was gonna do a video recommending books based on this album. However, that might be something I do down the line once I read a lot more books that I could probably fit within that framework, but that is coming at some point. But for now, I wanna read books recommended by her and I thought I should show the vinyl because it is simply stunning. Look how gorgeous this is. Like iconic behavior and I just think it's simply stunning. I love it. I, I just love Rena's brand. I think that she is just so chaotic and I resonate with that. I hope you have your beverages. Today I opted for a dirty chai because there's still an oat milk shortage in Starbucks and so I couldn't get my matcha. So someone recommended that I get dirty chai which is basically like a chai latte with an extra shot of espresso and I really like it so I'm gonna keep drinking it. So trying to find these books was really difficult. One book was really easy and the rest I had to scour the internet for and I finally found a Twitter post in I think it was 2020 at the start of lockdown where she was describing all the things that she was doing. By the way I really want now want to have a sourdough starter. It was like Bon Appetit before I went to shit really had like a good sourdough video but now I'm gonna still watch that but like I really want to start making sourdough for myself and so thank you Rena for reminding me of that obsession and so through that Twitter post I gathered some books that she had recommended and I four excellent picks today. And so I'm gonna go through them one by one and then we shall discuss. I'm really interested in seeing how these books resonate with her album, but also how we could inspire future songs and future albums as well. And if Rena somehow comes across this video, I would love for her to send me just like a list of her favorite books and also to keep watching because I will be recommending her some books later on in the video because it's what I wanna do if when I read like celebrity book picks, like I think recommending them books to go off and read would be amazing and it still carries on their love of reading so yes near the end of the video I'm going to be recommending books based off of the feels that I got from the rest of these books. So the very first book that I'll be reading is If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. We'll then be moving on to I Would Leave Me If I Could which is a poetry book by Halsey. We'll then lead on to The Power of Now by Eckhart Tolle and this one I'm really excited for because it's a preemptive book to my self-help books video that I'm doing next month and I just think this is such a popular self-help book and it's one I've been wanting to read for a while, so I'm really excited for it. And finally, this book is integral to Rena's brand as a whole and that is Alone Together by Sherry Turkle. And I am just really excited to read this because as someone who creates content online and someone that basically has a lot of their existence in the online presence, I'm really excited to see Sherry Turkle's take. And so seeing Rena recommend this book in like numerous articles, I am just really excited to see what this is all about. Basically, the aim for this video is just to gather a sense of Rena's reading taste and really see the type of books that she likes reading but from the general aspect of like these four books so far she has quite a varied taste in what she likes to consume. I think the majority of these books like speak to self-help and self-improvement but also feminism as well. It's also really nice to know that she's keeping herself informed and keeping herself and especially since she has a degree in political science from Cambridge it's just really really interesting to just pick her brain with through the books that she's reading. Rena is such an intelligent woman and and I will literally keep preaching this. The way that she is so active in her activism is truly, truly warming and welcoming. I think she is literally one of the rising pop stars of this generation and I think people do need to stand her more and I think that she needs to be recognized for everything that she does and she's amazing. She is 
she's phenomenal. I could, I could keep going on. I could keep going on. But yeah, the aim of this video is literally just see the books that she reads and hopefully get her to read some books that I recommend as well. I'm just really excited for to one day hopefully be able to get a list of Rena's favourite books and read them as well because I think that would be really cool to do. But as of yet, she hasn't published a list of her favourite books. So I'm going to be keeping an eye out though. And if it's ever published, you bet that I will be making a video on it. But yeah, let's get on with the video. So the very first book that I'll be reading is If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha. And the cover image was a mesh of Getty Images and Shutterstock. And I just really like it as well. I know there's another cover that it looks really gorgeous as well. And I'm, I also really like that cover. But I saw Carly Thorne from Uncarly talk about this. And Carly's channel is amazing. I'll have a link in the description down below. She basically talked about this in her Books for Cool Girls video. And of course, I want to be a cool girl as well. So you know I have to watch it. She just made it sound really interesting. And seeing that Rena also read it and really liked it as well, I was like, okay, the stars are aligning. It's time for me to read this. Basically, If I Had Your Face plunges us into contemporary soul, following the lives of four women as they navigate a world obsessed with beauty, power, and fame. Kyori, whose status is threatened after making a careless mistake. Miho, after achieving a scholarship to an art school in New York, becomes enmeshed with the lives of the Korean wealthy elite. Wana, a pregnant woman who has no idea how she can afford to raise a child with her husband in a competitive job market. And Ara, whose obsession with a K-pop idol will drive her to violent extremes. And basically, when I told my sister this premise, she literally saw Ara and was like, that's a sasang. And I was like, you might be right, you might be right. And so I think it's definitely interesting that Rena had read this book because I definitely think there's a lot of things that already from the outset has like influences from her art as well, such as feminism, such as capitalism, but also parasocial relationships as well. And parasocial relationships are basically one-sided relationships between a person and like an artist, celebrity or influencer where the person basically thinks that they know everything about someone and the other person doesn't know anything about them. So it's a completely one-sided relationship. And so it's really intriguing to see that. I'm also really excited to read this book because I'm buddy reading it from Chaddy, from Chaddy Reads Books. I would definitely go recommend checking out his Instagram. It's just so amazing and so like artistic and it's really cool. So I'll have that linked in the description down below. But yeah, I'm really excited to read it. I think that it's just gonna be a really, really like fast novel to read as well. Like I think Carly said, it, literally she consumed it within a few hours. I'm gonna get to reading If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha and I'll come back with my full thoughts and we'll delve into Rina Sawayama's mind of literature. 72 hours later. Hello besties and happy Tuesday. I basically took like the past like three days to read If I Had Your Face because I've been swamped with a bit of work. Dissertation is due on Friday, you know. So I finally got it read and I went book shopping yesterday and I got some new clothes. I'm wearing them today. Um, I'm, I'm fully obsessed with this green jacket. I think green is now becoming one of my favorite colors and I don't know why, but I just vibe with it so much. It just makes me so happy. But anyway, moving on. I finished If I Had Your Face and I really enjoyed it. I think that the characters were very um, distinct in their personalities and I think each of them represented a different part of South Korean society and also how they were pressured to conform to the beauty standards, the like the capitalist standards, and it just did really well in starting the exploration of these issues. And I say starting because we didn't really get a deeper look into the lives of these women. Whilst we did get some insight, I think it was all very surface level. I think I was slightly misled by the synopsis when it came to Ara and how her re like relationship with the K-pop idol would lead her to violent extremes. We only really got one moment of like violence from her throughout this like story, and so I think that isn't really like a violent extreme that like you would probably gather from the synopsis. We kind of just dropped off at the end. Like I think I had a similar issue with The Power by Naomi Alderman and I, like, I saw it in this as well where we're literally just reading a book and like we're getting to the end and you're like anticipating like something or you're anticipating something but then it just ends. I wonder if that is what Francis Cha was actually doing and like trying to point out is that just by it ending it's like it's still continuing and it's still perpetuating which kind of makes the ending a bit better than I initially thought. I think this is definitely one of those novels that you will have to think and reflect about and just let it sit with you in a way because it definitely explores the issues of misogyny and just the beauty standards that women face in this society and how women have it much harder than men in terms of the workforce and the 
the workplace, like we see this with Wanna and how she is pregnant and trying to still stay within her job because she cannot lose the income. It's just interesting. It's just such an interesting novel. And I gave this four out of five stars because I definitely can see why Rena would have read this. I think that Rena would have gathered a lot of the stuff about the social commentary and the way these women in room salons are being used and can just be thrown away in an instant. Like the kind of commodification of women in this novel. I think that it depicts it in such a way that you're kind of confronted with the realization that these are things that are happening. And I think that Rena definitely would have gathered a lot of the capitalist stuff from this novel as well. Hence excess and like the exploitation of workers. And yeah, plus she announced that she's collaborating with Elton John for a thing for Chosen Family. And I'm really excited for that. And it's just gonna be great. And I think it's gonna be amazing. I think If I Had Your Face is an excellent debut novel from Francis Chat. I think that they just are able to write in such a way that their prose is just really rich. And I really did like that. I think I'm really looking forward to seeing more novels from her and seeing how she explores like different issues further. The next books I'll be reading one after another because they're really quite short. So the two books I'm going to be reading are I Would Leave Me If I Could, which is the poetry collection by Halsey. I'm going to be listening to this through Audible and also reading the book because I want to get like the tonation and the way that Halsey wants the poetry to be read. And it's narrated by her as well, which is amazing. And I just love it when poets narrate their own poetry. I, I like Halsey's music. I'm like excited to see her poetry. I remember Jack and Carly have both read Halsey's poetry. So I'm going to be looking at what they've said afterwards. Carly did a whole video like about it. So I'm really excited for it because I've been putting off because I knew I was going to read this book. I'll also be delving into The Power of Now, which is like a self-help book aimed at taking the journey into the now. And we need to leave the ego behind. And we just basically need to act now, I guess. But it's definitely a self-help book that I've been told to read numerous times by people who have been like, if you ever need to read a self-help book, this is like the one you should read. So I'm excited to see like kind of how this has helped shape Rena's mindset because she did call this book transformative. So I'm really excited about that. I'm going to be reading these two books. Um, I really want to go back to Cardiff today. This is the issue. I, w I really want to go read by the castle, Cardiff Castle, or like in like the park. I want to like sit in the nature and just soak in the sun. I don't know. I think it's because I went out yesterday to like the bookshops and stuff that I have that sense of freedom once again. And like now I just want to go out all the time. And I just, I, mi I miss sitting in the parks. I miss being able to like go to bookshops and stuff. And it was just really nice to be able to go to a bookshop again. After that tangent, I'm going to get to reading these books. I'm also going to get to working on my dissertation because that's due on Friday. But I'll catch up with you once I finish these both and we can have a full discussion. And yeah, I'll see you soon. One eternity later. <laughs> Hello besties, it's been two weeks. Yeah, I didn't intend for such a big gap between when I started The Power of Now and then finished I Would Leave Me If I Could, but between finishing a dissertation, Shadow and Bone like being hyped up and coming out, um, just a bunch of different world events that have been happening, it's been a time. I've just been living, I guess. Like, I suffered a bit of a burnout because of my dissertation, and I've been trying to recover from that, and I have kind of recovered from that, which is great, but I was just feeling so, like, worn out and exhausted, and I really needed some time to, like, recuperate, and I didn't intend for it to take this long, but, like, hey, we're back now. I would probably have more to talk about this, so we can go through the power of now at this moment in time. Power of now, I can definitely see why Rena would want to read this book, because it's definitely transformative in the sense that it's it tells you to let go of the past and let go of like your worries about the future and just engage with who you are at in this present moment and also your current state of being, being like you existing and being okay with that. I think it definitely teaches a lot about letting go of your earthly attachments to the past. And there was a quote that someone shared in the late night book club discord being like, the happiest animal on the earth is the goldfish because its memory only lasts for 10 seconds. I find that to be a really beautiful quote, but also it's just such a beautiful lesson to take away like what we've had to deal with in the past shouldn't affect our present being and like whilst we can still recognize those emotions and still process those emotions they shouldn't affect what we're doing in this present time and especially with the future as well like yes we can go towards having like a perfect life in the future but we should also be looking to fulfill who we are in the present and ensuring that we're not basically putting ourselves in a negative headspace just so that we can benefit in the future I think we need to make sure that we're okay in the present and in the present moment and I love that. I just think the book conveys that so well um, and I can definitely see why Rena would want to read this and I think 
think it, she's amazing for that. And just seeing her thrive, oh my god, yes. During my two-week break, the Chosen family one-year celebration of Rina Sawayama happened. And oh, it was such a good collaboration between Rina and Elton John. I loved it. I stan it. It was just amazing. And seeing her like tiny desk performance as well. Stunning. Stunning. I just, uh, I cannot wait to see new people discovering Rina. I just think it's gonna be amazing and chef's kiss. I did have a few criticisms of The Power of Now, particularly how heteronormative it was. I think the relationship section of this book was geared more towards heteronormativity. That's just like my opinion anyway, like if you disagree, feel free to. But apart from that, I think that it, there are a few lessons that you can take away from this book. This book made me feel like I was in a university lecture because I think the tone of the novel and like the voice of the novel is very, not authoritative, but like you, like it's like he knows he's smart and he's like basically showing you how smart he is and the Q&A aspect. It just felt like he was speaking down to me almost a little in the beginning and then near the end it was more so I was having a conversation with like a professor and so it definitely felt a bit weird in that sense and I mm, no. And then we get on to Halsey's I Would Leave Me If I Could which is a poetry collection of 80 something poems. I decided to also listen to this via audio so that I could hear Halsey read her poetry and just get a feel for like the tonation and just if there was any emphasis on the words and I definitely think listening to it as well as reading it is a different experience and I would highly recommend it if you're looking to listen to this because I do think this poetry book does show a lot of potential for Halsey as a writer both of poetry and also prose because we do have a prose poem within this and I do think that's one of her best poems. You can see Halsey play a lot with poetry and like the different conventions of poetry like typical stanzas and rhyming couplets and it's okay. It's okay, it's an attempt. There are just a lot of poems that are unedited, uh, unpolished. There's like certain poems that convey the exact same themes as another poem and it's just not needed because another poem is already done that like, that particular poem is trying to convey. For example, Summer Fruit and Watermelon. I don't think Summer Fruit is needed even though it's introduced first because I think Watermelon is a better written poem and also conveys all the things that Summer Fruit is trying to convey. There are just certain parts where the poems are really beautiful in the beginning and then Halsey continues them. So for example, I will read Having because I think Having is a really good example of where Halsey continues on with the poem when she really didn't need to. So Having says, how strange to write about having when for so long I've drawn inspiration only from longing. That in and of itself is beautiful. I think that was amazing. But then she continues, pink cheeks, stubble ripples across them like a flower still clinging to you if it was plucked from. Your eyes are static electricity. You've missed me. Like, what does that tell me? What does that tell me, Halsey? What does that relate to having? Like, I get that, like, but, like, that doesn't contribute at all. So, what? But I do feel like this book needed more vigorous editing. I don't think they did much editing of this at all. I think Halsey basically submitted her poems and the publishing house were like, great, we have a bestseller. I also think there's just some poems in this that just exist. Like, they don't do anything. They just are there, they're words on a page, and that's it. I can definitely see Halsey's potential though as a poet and also as a writer because she writes a poem called The Painter, which is a prose poem, and it details a graphic event and I think the way that she writes it is like really well done. It's very hard hitting as well. So I think that poem in particular was one of her strongest as well as Watermelon. I Met a Mind Reader. I think Ankali was talking about this on her channel about I Met a Mind Reader. Like the very beginning of that poem is a beautiful poem and could literally be on its own. But then Halsey continues with like other stanzas and it literally could have been a separate poem on its own. You should go watch Carly's video on it because I love Carly. She's amazing. Um, I know Jack Edwards also had some thoughts on Halsey's poetry as well. So I'll leave that in the description. Also, actually, the audiobook left out a poem. I was listening to Having, and then it literally skipped straight to Stockholm Syndrome Part 2, and it left out a story like mine, which is literally another really good poem as well. I'm like, why? Why leave out that specific poem? Because I think, like, it just does so, it just does really well. Also, going back to Rena, I definitely think that she probably would have read this to gather inspiration and also support a fellow artist. I think, like, artists supporting other artists is definitely an amazing 
amazing thing to do. And definitely by posting on a social media, I definitely think Rena is like helping spreading Halsey's poetry to more people and so supporting Halsey as an artist. And I just love that. I love that. It's just really insightful to gather inspiration from other artists as well because like writers read books, like song artists are gonna listen to other people's music and possibly like their poetry as well just to gather inspiration from that as well. And I think like it's just so beautiful and it's just so great. And so yeah, I'm just really, really happy that I did get to read this and The Power of Now just to gather a bit more into Rena's mind and just the type of books that she likes. It's definitely interesting to see how like Rena's mind could potentially work like by reading all of these different genres of books. And I definitely think it's really cool to see kind of Rena diversify her reading tastes by reading poetry, by reading nonfiction, by reading fiction. And she's great. She's awesome. And I definitely think as well, like this poetry book does make a lot of social commentaries that particularly align with Rena's advocacy for particular social issues. And so it's definitely really great to like see that Rena's also reading a multitude of perspectives. And I just, I really like that. So now we get on to the final book of this video. And also the one that basically Rena has talked about the most, and that is Alone Together, Why We Expect More from technology and less from each other by Sherry Turkle. This is the revised and expanded edition. I was initially afraid because this book is 400 pages and I was like, with this font size? But it turns out the last 100 pages are basically like notes and an index. And I was like, but this text size is also a crime. This is a crime. You are not gonna give me size nine times New Roman. Is this size nine times New Roman? You're not gonna give me size nine font. Like, hello. This is, li it's literally so tiny. It's so tiny. I'm gonna have to do that thing in school where like I had like the finger and like following the lines because it's, it's just such a tiny font. It's such a tiny font. Like basic books, come on. Wait, the, the imprint is called basic books. But yeah, no, I'm really excited to read this because uh, Runa talks about this book a lot in different interviews. Also, it becomes part of like her concert culture as she hands out like wristbands that say alone together so that people who go to concerts on their own can connect with other people who also go to concerts on their own so that they can become friends and that they can hang out with one another. And I just think that's beautiful and amazing and definitely contributes to Rena's brand as a whole as being someone who advocates for the people. So yeah, I'm really interested to see how this book shaped Rena's thinking and kind of shaped the early, early seedlings of her brand. And so, yeah, I'm just very excited by it. And I just think it's gonna be, it's gonna be an insightful read. I'm gonna get to reading alone together, alone. And I will check back in with you once I finished so that we can wrap up this book and wrap up the video as a whole. See you later, besties. Epilogue. Hello, besties. I know, I've worn this jacket before in another clip, but I really love this jacket, so what the hell. I also managed to get some new key rings. I got this Gudetama one that just says mood. Oh my god, camera, focus. I got this Gudetama one that just says mood, and I just think it looks super cute. And then I got another one that says anxious. And you know, that just sums me up as like my brand and who I am because I am an anxious being and yeah. So let us get to the points of discussion. So I finished Alone Together by Sherry Turkle and I definitely think Sherry Turkle has a lot of good points. I think the initial first half when she talks about robotics and kind of our relationship with robots is really interesting and it kind of reminded me a lot of like these um, sentient android narratives that we see through like Westworld, through Detroit Become Human, through Clara and the Sun. I think developing a relationship with a robot can be good. It does come with some um, difficulties, but it's usually by human design. I think like the way that we treat 
artificial intelligence and robots and androids can really show how they'll treat us. If we treat them with kindness and respect and actually develop a connection with them, I don't see the reason why they would revolt against us. When she goes on to talk about social media, however, I do think that while she does have some good points in terms of being able to experiment with your identity online, perform a different version of yourself, I do think a lot of the references that she makes are outdated. This was written in 2011 and we're getting references to like Second Life and The Sims Online and MySpace and Furbies and I'm just like that's not what people are doing in 2011. People in 2011 are on Facebook, they're on Twitter. Like Twitter really was starting up in 2011 and people, more and more people were going on Twitter so it would be really good to like analyse that instead. I think as well with The Sims Online people were more so playing like The Sims 2 and Second Life, more people were playing Habbo Hotel at that point. Like I was on Habbo Hotel when the great Habbo Mute happened. That was a time, that was an experience. Oh yeah, I think a lot of the stuff that she says probably doesn't apply to a modern day standard, especially in the time of Rona, because she talks about how we basically rely more on like technology and social media to like explore things and that it's kind of dangerous to do that. But we're forming communities online, we're finding other people online and those people often, more often than not, can become in like in real life friends as well. So I think this book definitely doesn't take that into consideration. Whilst this book does raise some pretty good points, I definitely think there needs to be a slightly updated version talking more so about the effects of social media and how it's changed the social landscape because I definitely would see social media as being a very big part of the world today and like whilst I think it's good to have a healthy relationship, like being able to take some time away from social media, you can't distance the fact that social media basically performs a lot of our social interactions day to day and if anything it helps us become closer to people rather than distancing ourselves from people. And it's not that I think we're expecting more from technology and less from each other, it's that we're having a nice healthy relationship between expecting what we expect from technology and what we expect from each other. Because I think what we expect from each other sometimes is through technology and so the two are quite interlinked. But no, I definitely would be interested in like writing an essay surrounding this topic because I definitely think it's something that can be quite interesting and I definitely can see why Irina would have wanted to read this book because it definitely does talk a lot about, it definitely does influence a lot of her music, like we've seen the Access music video. Um, she plays like this animatronic, robotic, like saleswoman who like holds the Access bottle and I think that does harken back to a lot of Sherry Turkle talking about her relationship with robotics and how kind of we can sometimes use robots as like the workforce and um, how we could mistreat robots and like they'll malfunction and when, when they malfunction it's usually the human that feels bad about it and so we inherently feel bad about the robot malfunctioning because of our associations to capitalism. Which is really interesting to put together but also it's really good to see like alone together as well in like the in like the concert climate because a lot of the times if you're going alone Reno will be like have this wristband and it says alone together and other pixels will like talk and say hey to one another and I just think that's beautiful. I think the phrase alone together is just really beautiful. Like she first read this in 2015 so I can see kind of some of the stuff in this book being more relevant back then but six years on from that, wow 2015 was six years ago. But six years on from that, I can definitely see a lot of the stuff now being outdated and like whilst this is a revised and expanded edition that was published in 2017, I still see some of the stuff being like outdated. So I definitely think we need to have more research done in this area and I would definitely be interested in reading more of this. I definitely think it's much needed and like whilst Twitter is mentioned like three times in this, it's not nearly as talked about as like MySpace and other forms of research. So I definitely want to see like a book about kind of our relationship with social media but in, with a more modern lens on it. But yeah, that is basically all four books recommended by Rina Sawayama. So in conclusion, do I think Rina has good reading taste? Well, yes. I do think that like whilst some of the books I kind of enjoyed but didn't like love, I definitely do think that Rina's taste in books is definitely something that I would love to continue reading from in the future. Um, especially with like the rise of celebrity books 
clubs and everything, I definitely think Rena could do really well in starting a book club of her own because all these different books really made me think in a different way about a certain different area, whether it was whether it was about the treatment of women or whether it was about changing my mindset towards a certain area or just becoming inspired by poetry. I think that Rena has just such a diverse reading taste and it's really nice to see that reflected across the books that I read from her. I would definitely love to see more books recommended by her on her social medias so then I can do like another volume of these because Rena's my like one of my favorite artists. I would totally do another video of this in the future because it's just it's just iconic. But yeah, so Rena has good reading taste and I definitely enjoyed reading each and every one of these. I think whilst I did have my critiques, the reading experience was still nice and I did take a lot away from these books. Books that I would recommend to Rena. I have two books that I would like to recommend to Rena Salviama to read. The first one that I'd like to recommend is White Tears, Brown Scars, How White Feminism Portrays Women of Color by Ruby Hamad. I think this book does a lot in discussing the stereotypes faced by women of colour and how white women weaponise their tears against women of colour to perpetuate a um, almost white supremacist narrative. The second book that I then recommend is a fiction novel and that is Kim Ji Young Born 1982 by Cho Nam Joon and it's translated by Jamie Chang. This is a South Korean piece of fiction and it follows Kim Ji Young as she, um, through like many of her years, as she faces multiple situations. And this book talks about the misogyny that that South Korean women face, much like If I ha Had Your Face by Frances Cha, but I feel like this one takes it um, but one step further and just intricately discusses the small bits of misogyny that uh, Kim Ji Young faces in her life. And yeah, I read this last year as part of Koreadathon and I definitely feel like this book does a lot in discussing the problems that um, women face in South Korea and I, I definitely think it's a really good read and so I'd recommend Rina check this one out as well. But yeah, that is everything for this video. Like, it's taken a bit longer than usual to record this. I think becoming a bit closer to my favourite artists by reading some of the books they recommend, I think it's really good to just delve into their mind a little and see kind of why they would read this book and what they got from it. And I definitely think it, these books are going to help influence future works by Rina. And it's just amazing to just see like one year on from Sawayama how much Rina has grown as an artist. But yeah, overall, I just think Rina has such amazing reading taste and I'm just so happy that I finally got to read some of the books that she recommends and like, She's just such an amazing artist. I think her work is just so inspirational. And as a person of color living within the United Kingdom, I think like the way that she has just paved the way and has become an inspiration for so many people in the UK is just immense. And like, I would love to just discuss with her one day about like books and just things that she likes reading. And maybe one day like, I'll get to know her favorite books and then I'll read them for a video. But yeah, that is everything. So thank you, Rena, for the Rex. But yeah, if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up. And if you're new here, be sure to click that subscribe button so that you're notified whenever I upload next. This week's shout out fates, of course, goes out to Rena Sawayama and I would highly recommend you go check out all of her music, probably available on all music platforms. So yeah, um, my favorites would be Excess and Dynasty. Um, I also really love Chosen Family and definitely check out the Chosen Family uh, duet that she had with Elton John because it just, adds so much to that song and it's amazing. If you want to check me out on any other social media platforms, I'll have them all linked in the description down below for you. And yeah, if you like this video and want to support this channel any further, I'll also have a coffee link in the description down below, which you can use to tip any amount of money. And this is optional. I'm really excited to read like more celebrity book recommendations slash favorite books. So if you have any celebrities that you'd like me to read next, make sure to leave a comment in the comment section down below and I will add them to the list. And so yeah, I guess until the next video, bye besties.